Hello and welcome once again to my humble space. Thanks so much for joining me once again today. So the last couple of weeks we discussed the structures of the Bible. We learned about the possible training of Jesus and looked at some of the parables of one of the Pharisaic law and its alignment to him. You can find this information in the video named Instructors of the Bible Part 2. So once we become uh, more back to life, the nonprofit I started will be providing language classes. I continue to meet with the team to discuss the logistics of how all this is going to play out. And while recently doing so, um, my thoughts move to the interpreters of the Bible. So today I'll spend a little time discussing this group. I may have um, to complete this in a two-part series, we'll have to see, but just wanted you guys to give you guys a heads up um, on that. So in dissecting the role of interpreters of the Bible, it is easy to note their link to instructors. Interpreters um, were instruct, they instructed or illustrated. And when seeking out the interpreters in the Bible, there are references to just around four individuals, but yet there are about 60 suggestions. And most of these found in the book of Daniel. We see the word used in Genesis 42:23 which in Hebrew means to treat as a foreigner. And in Genesis 48, it means to interpret or explain. In 1 Corinthians 14, 28, the Greek word Paul used means one who interprets or explains fully. In this context, this could also refer to one's ability to explain words of different languages. In Paul's academic stance, it generally means someone who's competent. Some today may refrain from discussing the meaning of uh, dreams. This may not be a thing to do in our modern day Christian life. Yet, I believe it's imperative to review areas of the Bible such as Genesis 41.8 where sacred scribes were brought in to analyze and deliver the meaning of dreams. Now moving to Joseph's life, we see interpreters were used to translate one language into maybe Egyptian dialogue, dialect and that's in Genesis 42:23. Now the ambassadors sitting in foreign courts also serve as interpreters and we can see this in 2 Chronicles 32:31 and Ezra 4:7. Reviewing Daniel 2:2:4:6 uh, 2, we see this as well and having this ability also offered people prestigious positions on high courts of rulers who held no specific belief system quite obvious in the positions of Joseph, as we see in Genesis 48 and Daniel um, 1, 3, 2, 5, 11, 16, 2, and 1, 4. Interesting fact though, both Joseph and Daniel served as interpreters of dreams. Joseph in historically in the beginning of the covenant people and Daniel at the end. But this lesson's focus of an interpreter as an occupation or trade is different. We'll get into this a little bit later. So consequently, friends, Daniel's utility as an interpreter of mystical uh, handwriting brought him much accolade with a promotion to boot. He was highly regarded for his ability which took him all the way through the uh, sovereigns of Darius and Cyrus. If we seriously think on this though, Daniel was given supernatural wisdom, which aided him to interpret the influence of sequential empires throughout the ages, 
right up to the birth of Christ. If you read the Bible, friends, you'll see what I'm talking about. If you don't understand, I would say um, seek out both a historical um, person who knows the Bible and an everyday Bible teacher. Make time for this. It's an amazing book to get to know. It will change your thoughts, outlook, perceptions, and ultimately your life. If you don't believe me, my daughter would be happy to share her testimony with you. But wow, look at the time already. It looks like we'll have to discuss more of this next week. In the meantime, though, check out Job 33:23, which says, Yet, if there is an angel on his side as a mediator, one out of a thousand, to tell a man what's right for him. This angel came to Job as an interpreter, right? An amazing interruption came as a campaigner for our father. So friends, this week, take time to sit quietly and really listen. Find advocates of our father in your lives. What is God trying to tell you through his thoughts or through your thoughts? The people you speak with, your close friends, your work, your duties of a mother, father, wife, husband, family member, in nature, through animals, through the health choices you make. All of these things and many more. He teaches through the mediations of so many things in the Bible, but specifically through his son, Jesus Christ. He continues to teach through fragments or wholeness in our everyday lives. Spend time in the Bible, you'll see. The more time you spend in right there, the more it will all make sense to you. So next week, we'll jump back into this topic. Until I see you guys again though, remember as I always say, be peace, be kind, be love, and be blessed. Bye for now guys. Take care. Later. Bye-bye.